Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's Adobe XD tutorial I'm going to show you how you can fake this hover effect because of the structure of Adobe XD it's not really possible to pull off such an effect but you can actually tell to your client that they should actually click these items and tell your developers that it's actually on hover. So how the overall effect actually looks like when you click right here, it's going to show a UI design, this arrow, it's going to move this navigational item and also show the corresponding image to the UI design. When they click UX design, it's going to change motion design. So you can see that it's changing for all of them. And when you go back to UI design, it's going to back to the first one. So let's get started. Before we get started with today's video, make sure to check out my membership link is going to be down in the description below. Membership contains all of my courses, digital design products, mentorship, private access to the Facebook group and much more. So if you're interested, make sure to check it out. Once again, link is going to be down in the description below. Now you might be noticed that we didn't have any uh, actual startup state at the end. So if I click right here, to take you to the preview once again you can see that we cannot go to the first state and that is actually intentional because as you can see i just have a navigation i don't have a website behind this navigation so you can just imagine that uh, here uh, will come the menu icon for example or x for the close or something like that so then you can click there as a user and go back to the actual website but in this video i'm just showing you the navigation itself so as i mentioned if you join my membership you are going to get this file if not i'm going to walk you through how i structured it and how i actually pulled it off but before i start to do that i want to quickly mention why it's impossible to pull something like this off in adobe xd using the actual hover effect so for those of you who don't know uh, we have all of these uh, states right here for the components because if I jump in right here, we have this navigation hover effect as a component and all of these are component states. So when I click right here to add a plus, we have the hover state and we have a toggle state if you actually want to create these toggles in your UI designs. So for the hover state, I can actually go ahead and create all of these as separate hover states, but the trouble is users cannot click them because they are lined up like so. So if I actually select the UI design and show you. So go right here to the UI design and open up my menu. You can see that we have this UI design text and when I click the UI folder, you can see how much space it takes. When I click the UX folder, you can see that they overlap, motion, they overlap, content, they overlap. So here is our main problem, why we cannot pull it off as the actual hover effect, because all of these groups are overlapping each other and users cannot actually hover on a singular item. They can actually hover if we don't have this UI design uh, text behind it and that text is the same basically for all of these just uh, writes a different thing. So if I click UX design you can see it says UX design, motion design, content and so on. Uh, so that's the actual problem. We cannot actually hover right here on this text because the text elements are overlapping each other. So what I actually did right here, if I take you back to the default state, we have this structure. So we actually have tap points. And if I open them up, select them all, hit zero on my keyboard, you can see how these tap points look like. Basically, these are just rectangles and I reduce the opacity like this to zero for all of them and put them in a separate folder. That way we can actually use these tap points to tap to transition to all of these other elements. Next, we have folder with images and basically we have company image, which is the starter state uh, or the default state, however you want to call it. And once again, I want to mention that if you actually have a website behind this design, you're going to have an X right here to close it or a menu icon. Then you can go back to this uh, startup state or uh, the beginning state. Next, we have a UI design image, we have UX design and so on for all of these other images. And basically what I've done is when I start the transition between all of these states, I actually just reduce the opacity of the image itself. So basically for the UI design, if I take you back to UI design state right here, and go to images, you can see that the company image is lowered down in opacity to 0%. UI design is wet 100% and you cannot actually see all of these other images. While if we go back to, for example, content, 
open it up, open up the images, you can see that all of these up to content creation are at 0% opacity. So basically that's how you can go between the states. If I take you back to default state and show you the overall structure of all of these, what we have for UI, UX, motion, content and photo, and no matter how, how many navigational items you actually have inside, basically the structure remains the same. So uh, inside of the default state right here, what we have is all of these elements are hidden. So in each of these, I have these three items. So I have the arrow mask, I have the uh, name of the category, and I have the text which goes behind it. And it's the same for all of them. If I go ahead and open them up, you can see how that looks like. As for the mask itself, what I've done is I simply included the arrow icon and I simply created another rectangle and made a mask by using shift control M or shift command M if you're on a Mac. And then you can create that mask and you can simply hide this arrow on the startup state. While if we switch back to UI design, you can see what happens. So image of the UI design is showing. Now the arrow is showing because we opened that mask up. So basically it was like this previously, if I showed you. So it was like this. Inside of the UI design state, I simply expanded to look like this. What I also done is I nudged the UI design text 40 pixels to the right and changed the color to white to make sure that users uh, connect that they have hovered on this particular item or in our case, because as I said, we can hover uh, on multiple items in uh, Adobe XD, they should click to jump to UI design stage. Also, this background text is just at 2% and you can see that it's extra bold, but if I take you right here, it's bold, open sense, so free Google font, which I'm using for this example, obviously you can use any kind of uh, font that you want. And basically that's the whole structure, that's how all of this is pulled off, that's how it looks like. And finally, let me take you to the navigation, so if I switch to prototype and if I select my tapping points, you can see what I've done. So they are exactly the same for all of them. You can see we are using tap for the trigger. We are using type for the action. It's auto animate for the transition itself. Destination. So it takes us to UI design state. And finally, we have easing ease in out because I wanted to ease in before the animation and after the actual animation and duration is 0 0.6. How that actually looks like is if I click right here, if you think this is too slow, you can obviously adjust these things, but I think it works just fine for this example. Finally, as I said, you can pull off X right here and that X is going to bring you back to your main stage. And that's basically it. The only annoying thing about this approach is you will actually have to go inside of each state. So UI design, UX design, motion, content and product and you have to include these stepping points for each of them. So that's one annoying thing about Adobe XD and I really hope the team is going to fix that issue in the future because it's here for a really long time already and it annoys me for years now because if I created these tapping points inside of my default state, I just want them to transition to all of my other states because I didn't make any changes. I didn't change the color. I didn't change the size. I didn't change the opacity. I didn't change anything. I want to basically transfer that animation, which I included in my default state throughout all of my additional states. So basically that's it. If I switch to preview once again, enlarge it, you can see how that looks like. You can obviously go ahead and include different backgrounds. For example, you can include gradients, which are going to change on click or on hover when this actually gets developed by developers. And basically this is how it's done. So one final thing I forgot to mention is this text is moving, this big uh, background text is moving 40 pixels down and 40 pixels to the right. So you can see when I change, you can see how it looks like. Basically, this text stays in exactly the same stage, in exactly the same place in the default state. And for each of these states, it moves 40 pixels to the right and 40 pixels to the bottom because these texts are moving 40 pixels to the right. Arrow is also showing from left to right when you unveil the mask. And that's basically it. That's how it's done. So you can play around with these. You can also uh, include the different transitions right here. So if I switch to prototype, if I take you back to here, 
you can use different easings if you don't like easing out you can use ease in just ease out you can use snap bounce whichever one you want and obviously you can play around with different durations as i said if you think that this is uh, too short or too long however you want so basically uh, depending of your example and what you're trying to create maybe you can play around with these settings so that's it for this video thank you for watching if you like what you saw in this video make sure to subscribe i upload new videos every single week right here on the channel about adobe xd about passive income techniques design motivation and more so if you don't want to miss that make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video take care